So today we've got a 2012 Ford Fiesta 1.2 ZTEC engine, petrol, uh, with roughly 65,000 miles on the clock. So when the customer dropped this car off, they reminded me that um, during a recent MOT, the front brake discs and pads were getting quite low. So when we're working on the brake system, it's a good idea to take the reservoir cap off because when you push the pistons back in the caliper, it forces fluid up into the reservoir, which you need to extract or just let it trickle over. Also, while the car's on the floor, we'll crack the wheel nuts loose. And another good tip, if it's got locking wheel nuts, make sure you ask the customer where you can find the locking wheel nut key because they can be tucked in all different places and a pain to find. Just be ready to catch this wheel in case it falls off. Sometimes they uh, can get quite stuck, and other times they come off easy. Oh, that one's off easy. So we've got the wheel off now. I'll turn this round a bit so it's a bit easier to see. Um, so the reason we're looking at the front brakes today, because they're making a bit of a noise, they're a bit harsh sounding. Um, yeah, and there is quite a lip on the, on the discs. The pads, you can just about see down in here. That's the metal backing part of the pad. That's the disc, which you should be able to see when I turn. And the bit in between is the brake pad lining material, which I'd say is probably only about half worn. But being as they're making quite a noise, we're going to uh, go ahead and strip it down and replace the discs and pads. Right, so in order to get the caliper off, I'm going to take it right off. If you're just changing pads, you can probably get away with just undoing this lower bolt here, which is a 12 millimeter on this one. I might need a spanner to hold that nut still. Yeah, let's grab a spanner. Nineteen mil. Right, that's that one out. So if you get the screwdriver on the outside of the disc, you should be able to lever this across a little bit. And by sliding this across, that in turn pushes the piston in a little bit, just to give you a bit of space to work on it. I think, I don't know, that's a bit tight on there. So I'm not going to do that. I thought we might be able to just flip it up to get the pads out, but risk damaging the flexi hose. bit easier. So now you can see brake disc, one brake pad and the other brake pad. That one's quite tight in there. Cool, that is tight. That should be loose. So that's going to need some cleaning up. It could be why it's noisy because it's been overheating. That one was a bit loose. Not well, not too bad. Could be better. Um, some things to check while the caliper's off. Make sure these sliders are free. You can get these rubber boots separately and take them out and clean them up and re-grease them if they stick. Another thing to check is underneath this boot. Sometimes it's worth just having a peep, but that all looks clean and shiny as it should be. If these rubber boots tear, you get water in there and they corrode and get a bit pitted and they can seize up and not return properly. I'll grab a pair of grips and make sure this slides back in as it should do. Yep, 
yeah, that's pushing in. So when you push this in, that's when the brake fluid gets pushed back up the pipe and into the reservoir and can come out, trickle out. Okay. Next we'll um, get this carrier off. Right, so to get the caliper carrier off, we've got two 15mm bolts, which I'm gonna undo with a gun. Take this over to the vice and uh, give it a bit of a clean up. Right now it's in the vice, just makes it a little bit easier. We'll give this a clean up where the brake pads sit. That'll get a little bit dusty now. You do find a lot of the time that it's because of the dust and corrosion in here, that's the reason why the brake sticks. More often than not it's just this that needs cleaning. So once that's cleaned off, it's a good idea to pop these off. Give the back of them a bit of a dusting off as well. And the actual uh, carrier itself. Because the uh, the water sits in there in between that little shim and the carrier and uh, causes it to rust and it kind of bubbles up um, which closes up the gap where the pad sits and just stops it from sliding to and from. Probably should have put some gloves on for this, really. Oh, let me turn this around. You often find that one side's worse than the other. The lower one usually holds the water in there and rusts up more than the upper one. slide through there okay yeah good so there's one of the old pads and there's a new one you can see the difference in the thickness there I mean there is still quite a bit of life left in there but because it's um, the discs of it scored you can see by the edges of the pad and making a noise we will be changing the whole set. Um, it's a good idea with brake pads just to put a bit of grease on the uh, ears of the pad where they're supposed to slide in the caliper carrier. So I'll go ahead and do all four like that in uh, preparation to get it back together. Right now, I've been quite lucky on this one because it's actually loose. Most of the time they, they seize on there and you'd end up going around the hub, giving it a clout with a hammer. 
Um, you can hit the outside of the disc as well, it doesn't matter because you're changing it. Loosen it off. Yeah, that's a bit rough on the inside edge. Um, you can give these a dust off with a wire brush if they're corroded. This one actually isn't too bad. It's all quite smooth. Main thing is just to make sure that um, there's no debris on there to get trapped between the uh, disc and the hub. So that could give you a uh, brake judder. So the new discs, they've got like a, a lacquer, oily lacquer coating, which I like to um, just use brake and clutch cleaner, get the worst of it off. Obviously, once you uh, start driving it, the first few times you use the brake, it, it might sound a little bit harsh, but it will just clean it all off as you're braking. It doesn't hurt to try and clean some of it off. caliper carrier back on. Right, so before I bolt this on, some brake discs have a little grub screw that you need to remove to get the things off. This one didn't have anything, but it has got a threaded hole there, which is just, um, you know, if you need to change the disc further down the line and it does get stuck, you can wind a bolt in there and it'll push against the hub and crack the disc loose. It can be quite useful. Let me get this carrier back on, which has got the two 15 millimeter bolts. Check that with a ratchet. Great. Um, yeah, next we get the pads in. So, a couple of things to look out for uh, when you put pads in. I mean, on this car, they have the same. Um, both sides. Sometimes they can be directional. Um, you might find an arrow on the back. Um, but yeah, just make sure that they are the same. All four pads are identical. So it doesn't matter which side you fit them on. I'm going to start by putting it in like that. Twist it round. That's it. That's fairly loose in there. Same this side, which I can't really see, so I'll need to come around there. That's it. Right, now that's all bolted up with the pads in there, and like, you can move them around fairly easily, which is great. We'll get this caliper back on. I've already pushed the piston in. Gently with a gun.
Great, that's it, all back together. We'll just get the wheel on. Okay, same really as when you put the uh, disc on the hub, just make sure the hub on the disc hasn't got anything, any debris on there. And it all looks fine. Brand new disc, shouldn't be anything on there. So that's all, I know that all looks loose, but that's normal. Once the wheel's bolted on, it will pinch it all together. Right, I think we'll drop it down on the ground now and double check them wheel nuts with a bar. Right, back on the ground now. Just gonna put my brake bar on here and make sure these are nipped. Like all fittings on a car, you can look up torque settings, but you know, as long as you're sensible and don't over tighten, then you should be fine. Right, happy with that. Um, I've already done exactly the same on the other side, no different to this one. Um, brake fluid reservoir. As you can see, it has come right up and trickled over. Um, I've got a small like a pipette thing here. Just take a little bit out of that, drop it back down a bit. It doesn't matter if it is slightly over the maximum, as long as there's a little bit of an air gap at the top. That should do. So the discs and pads I fitted are aftermarket ones, which you should be able to pick up the whole set for, uh, I don't know, under a hundred pounds. Um, if you went for genuine Ford parts, you'd be looking at at least double that. Um, right, I'm just gonna, Take some water now because I did some of that brake fluid trickled over. Make sure the gap's on properly. And just give it a rinse off. It makes a brilliant paint stripper uh, brake fluid. So if you do get any on the bodywork, make sure you've got some water and a soft cloth, maybe. Um, now, the most important part of this before we go on a road test is to make sure you pump the brake pedal because uh, if you don't do that, you'll find the first time you go to use the brakes, the pedal will go to the floor and nothing will happen. So sit in the car, pump the brake pedal up, make sure it comes up rock hard. And then, uh, then that's just about it really. I'm gonna, um, as with all of my jobs, take it for a run round of the block and then uh, double check, make sure everything's okay. Well, thanks for watching, hopefully the video's been of uh, some help for you. And if it has, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It will help our channel out no end. Cheers.